Thanks for staying with us. For most people, a stoma is a medical device commonly associated with the elderly, but they're far more widely used than you might think. But what exactly are they? 31-year-old Connor Grant has had to live with a stoma for a decade, and he's here to tell his story, along with Consultant General and Colorectal Surgeon, Dr. Paula Lachlan. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Hi, guys. Connor, Ray asked, what is a stoma? Oh. Can you answer that for us? So, basically, in my own kind of non-medical terminology, mm -hmm. um, basically a stoma is a device that's fitted to your uh, stomach, mm -hmm. basically to allow your waist okay. to... To get out through Decollect. this yes. sort of a valve and opening. Yes. Okay, okay, instead. And tell us about your story and how you, you came to have a stoma at a very young age. You were just, was it 20? Yes, I was 21. Um, so basically, uh, I was back in 2009. Um, basically, I was sick for a few days. Um, I went to the doctor two, three days in a row. I thought, um, he said to me, listen, we need to get a suppository and, you know, that will kind of clear out your bile. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, too, because bile problems and bile issues, it's always a kind of taboo subject. No one ever wants to talk about that. Mm. Um, so then it was actually, um, the doctor had recommended, he said, oh, a nurse will be out tomorrow. But it was actually a, um, a hairdresser, so it was a client of mine. Um, and I was like, oh, I can't have this client come out and do the suppository in the house and whatever. So I took myself off to a &E, um, and they took me through the kind of triage nurse and kind of all the kind of standard things they do in any and I was like guys look it's just need a suppository this is what's going on this is what needs to be done and that's that's that sure. um so basically then they went and did scans and things and they obviously seen something sinister that wasn't uh -huh. um looking good so th then they kept me on so over the next two to three days I got um sicker and sicker mm. and then I got rushed on to do exploratory surgery so I woke up in recovery in Elton Galvin um, and I remember feeling that I could feel my bowels starting to move mm. and I said to the nurse in recovery I said um, oh can you help me go to, go to go the to bathroom the go, to, go to the loo yeah. and she was like no you're fine go where you are and I was like I, I, I can't I can't get in the bed and recovery and go here and she said do you, do you know what surgery you've had done and I said of course I don't I was like why so then um my Such surgeon came down yes and uh, he came down and explained to me what it was and what a colostomy bag was because I was wrapped up in bandages and I couldn't so see you had anything no, no idea I, when no you were clue. going in and you no woke clue. up then the colostomy bag no was clue. there and that was going to be your future so then. then that's when they explained it and I, at that point I had never heard of a stoma colostomy ileostomy yeah. urostomy nothing none you were just a kid at the time like you were 20 yes and you, you just came down with this infection and then the next thing you wake up yeah. with 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 the colostomy bag mm -hmm. uh what was I mean, I can only imagine what it was like waking up and being told the news at the time without ever having considered Even it. Even as well as the impact, obviously, on your physical health, I think nearly the outweigh of the mental yeah. impact on that, on your mental health, can it nearly outweigh that? It was like... <gasps> How did you deal which, with that? Did you block people and keep them For the first length? couple of five or six days in the hospital, I was like, I don't want to see anybody, yeah. I don't want to talk to anybody, I, want, I need to get my own head around it. Yeah. Um, but then I think... I just kind of came to terms with it, and that's why I'm so public about speaking out about it and talking to um, like pre-op patients and post-op patients. Anything I can do to help must be a huge help Definitely, for patients because it, it it makes me give gives me a purpose mm. to speak to people about my experience. Tell us then, Connor, about your day-to-day -day life and uh, yes. living with it because this has been ten years more at this stage. Ten years, yeah, yeah. Um, completely hundred percent fine. Okay. Com completely. At the start, when I, I had went to um, a, an event with one of the um, stoma supply companies in a local hotel a few months uh, post-op, when my first operation, okay. not my second, um, and they focused really on really negative things, you know, like infections around your stoma site. And this is like the, the professional advice yes. they're giving people, okay. I, um, and I was like, but that... But these kind of things don't really happen. So I wanted to make something more positive out of, you know, a negative situation. Yeah. Uh, Paula, I must ask you, what kind of conditions would require a stoma and what is the aftercare like? How long are people at home learning, like Connor did, to manage? 
going well, forward? Commonly, I suppose, we do, we do the surgery for colorectal cancer, inflammatory bowel disease and diverticular disease, including a number of other conditions. I suppose Connor was unfortunate in that he was in an, an emergency case and so had no time to prepare for the fact that he needed a stoma. In the plan setting, we do try and obviously provide people with information and education. And we know that doing that as early as possible actually has a significant impact on how patients recover mm -hmm. and on their quality of life afterwards. And so, are they um, reversible <coughs> or permanent? So for many people, they will be reversible. For some people, as in Connor's case, they're not. Um, and it very much depends on the nature of the disease, the underlying disease, the, the okay. reason for the stoma, and also on the individual themselves. We. It, we, uh, it's a generalisation that it's older people that have Absolutely. that will have a stoma. Yeah, sure. It's yeah. not, not a kid like, like Connor sitting next to you. Uh, what kind of proportion of people, or what would be the, the spread in terms of who would uh, have a stoma? Well, I suppose for many pa patients with inflammatory bowel disease, it often affects younger patients in their twenties and thirties. So right. th you know, uh, some of them will obviously end up needing a, a stoma. Um, for the colorectal cancer patients, the the ages would probably be a, a little bit older. Okay. Um, but there is a spread, yeah, I think absolutely. There, there are a lot of misconceptions around living with a stoma. And I think one of the things that people are not aware of is the prevalence. There are about 40,000 people on the island of Ireland today living with a stoma. Really? Mm. And I think the fact that people don't know that is a reflection that unless someone tells you they have a stoma, then you won't know. Yeah, I suppose is that is the thing. reassuring for people, yeah. I think. It, it is a very private thing, I suppose. <clears throat> uh, I suppose Connor talking about it, it does show that, like, it's mm. fine. You can live your life. Absolutely. You can live a full 100%. life, a very happy life, and and carry on with yes. with with everything that everyone else would do. Yeah. Um, like all major surgery, Paula, of course, there could be some complications, mm -hmm. and there has to be a lot of self care mm -hmm. involved, mm -hmm. and you have to manage living with a stoma. So, what sort of complications are we talking about? Like dehydration, skin irritation, I would imagine. Since yeah, the skin so there is are so some sensitive. that are obviously more common than others, and, and skin irritation, I think, would probably be one of the most common, particularly with an ileostomy, where the, the content itself can be irritant to the skin. Mm -hmm. But again, this is where the stoma nurses are incredibly helpful and supportive for patients and are very experienced in the use of different devices and appliances that will help manage that. So, most of these common problems are very manageable. Yeah. Um, and then, as with any condition, there are Obviously, the, the, the less common, more serious complications. There's a list on screen that's... now. Connor's going to be given out us from the list up, I'd say, because he doesn't want to focus on the negatives. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, have not that, have not that. Well, that's right to hear. <laughs> and of course, there's plenty of positives in terms yes. of you going from strength to strength in mm -hmm. your career, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. But are people surprised when you are so open about this conversation? And are people intrigued and curious to learn more? Yes, definitely. I have, as a hairdresser mm. and own a salon, um, I have loads of people because I've, I've, I've literally had I've had a classmate from when I was 21. Now in January past this year, I've been fitted with an elastomy. I've had my whole large bowel removed. Um, so I'm kind of known for for having it. And then people would kind of come into the cell and be like, "Would you mind talking to my brother, my sister, my aunt? No, about you know their post surgery or just." At, uh, pre-surgery or post-surgery, you know, and just talk to them just about my personal experience. I'm not yeah. a medical professional. I'm just talking from my own personal it's experience. The human touch it. is so yes, important, though. Definitely. When people are afraid and apprehensive, you're mm. also involved with uh, is it vanilla? Vanilla blush. Vanilla blush yes. An underwear company as it's well, an which is lovely. Underwear company. Initiative. Um, I met Nicola from Vanilla Blush, literally ten years ago, um, and we did a lot of kind of uh, like a positive um, kind of. Uh, positive kind of body image workshops and different things. You no, know, about having a stoma and um, promoting underwear and stuff. And just it, it was great. It was really, really good. Just to kind of come from a positive aspect rather than you know you can love, you can do this, you can have a career, you can have your own business, you can do all these different things. It's not something you have to sit at home and. No, it's not you know, it's not the end of the world. And Paula, great to hear as well that usually, usually, not all circumstances, people are well informed prior to the operation as yeah. well and you give as much before care and, and post-op care as you can. Yeah, no, we try and provide that support and the stoma nurses in particular, oh, I should say, are... The whole, honestly, yeah. all <clears> that, the Yeldon staff, from, from my day one, day ten years later, day all the nurses in the community, doctors, have been absolutely amazing. I can't thank you. You're pretty amazing yourself, sir, it must be said. Oh, thank uh, you. Fit and healthy and looking good. Thank you. And find the flag. Thanks very much for joining no us worries. this morning. Thank Cheers. you for having us. Paula, thank thanks you. a million as well. Cheers. Thank you.